It leads to a series of impressive mountain peaks, the Troll Tindene, the Troll Peaks. And in the heart of these summits lies a sheer mountain face 1,000 meters high. It's called Troll Vegan, Troll Wall. There's no doubt about it. We're in troll country. If you stop at the edge of the troll kingdom, nature reveals something about these strange characters that fill Norwegian folk tales. Trolls are enormous, fat, and often covered with moss and shrubs. They can have up to nine heads, and when they're angry, their heads can explode. Their strength, comparable to that of 50 men, is matched only by their cruelty. It seems they have a taste for the flesh of disobedient children. Fortunately, however, there's always a happy ending. Once upon a time, there were three goats named Bouquet la Barbichette. They were on their way to the mountain pastures to fatten up. But in Norway, there are lots of streams. And to cross this one, they had to cross the bridge under which lived an enormous, horrible troll. His eyes were as big as pewter plates, and his nose was as thick as the handle of a felling axe. The youngest, Bouquet la Barbichette, adventured onto the bridge. Click, 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 went the goat's hooves over the bridge. Who's scampering over my bridge? asked the troll. It's only me, Bouquet la Barbichette the younger, on my way to the mountain pasture. I'm going to gobble you up, replied the troll. Oh no, I'm so little. Wait until the middle Bouquet la Barbichette comes along. He's much bigger than I am. A little later, the middle Bouquet la Barbichette came along, and he too convinced the troll to wait for his bigger brother. Finally, the biggest Bouquet la Barbichette came along. Thud, 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 went the bridge. Because the goat was so big and strong, his steps made the bridge echo loudly. Who's pounding across my bridge? screamed the troll. It's me, Bouquet la Barbichette the Big. I'm going to gobble you up. Come on, then. I'll poke your eyes out with my horns and crush your bones with my hooves. He charged into the troll and butted him into the stream. Bouquet la Barbichette the Big joined his two brothers in the mountain pasture where they lived like kings. In fact, they never came back down the mountain again. In Norway, although nature may indeed inspire some of the legend's meanest, ugliest monsters, in reality, no one could really fear them. These fresh, luminous landscapes are too reassuring. In other European countries, however, there are mountains and forests that are just as beautiful, but darker and more austere and ominous. Some of the folk tales from these regions are real nightmares. I soon lost sight and recollection of ghostly fears in the beauty of the scene. Before us lay a green, sloping land full of forests and woods, with here and there steep hills crowned by clumps of trees or farmhouses. In and out among these green hills, the road disappeared as it swept around the grassy curve or was shut out by the strangling pine woods. Beyond the hills, mighty slopes of forests rose up the lofty peaks of the Carpathian. These lines are from Jonathan Harker's diary. They set the stage for a work which Oscar Wilde described as perhaps the most beautiful novel of all time. Within stood a tall old man, clean-shaven save for the long white moustache, and clad in black from head to foot without a single speck of color about him anywhere. He held in his hand an antique silver lamp in which the flame burned without chimney or globe of any kind. The instant, however, that I had stepped over the threshold, he moved impulsively forward and holding out his hand, gripped mine with a strength that made me wince. The effect was not lessened by the fact that it seemed as cold as ice, more like the hand of a dead than a living man. Count Dracula, I asked. I am Dracula, and I bid you welcome, Mr. Harker, to my house. In his famous novel, Bram Stoker places Dracula's home in Tsekarland, north of the Transylvanian mountains. It's no accident that the story of the vampire count takes place in Romania. 
The peasants in these regions believe deeply in many folk legends concerning death and ghosts. Here they're called Strigoyu, Nosferate, Moriyu, Muroni. Each has its own characteristic and evil power. 